Hello and welcome all the Reefians to another episode of Reef Explorer series. Blockchain technology has revamped the world of internet and web immensely. A technology that unfolded as a distributed ledger system for a peer-to-peer -peer cash system has now evolved in multiple forms and variants. Many blockchains have tried to explore the true essence of decentralized and modular web, but the real modularity and innovation is yet to unfold. In order to achieve and discover new forms of blockchains, where challenges like scalability, upgradability and interoperability are solved, Gen3 layer 1 blockchains emerged in the industry. The current rising demand for Web3 technology created a need in the market which the existing tech was unable to fulfill. Such rising demand has motivated the upcoming blockchains to innovate their node architecture with all forms of future proofing in scalability, interoperability, forkless upgrades, user experience and transaction cost and speed. ReefChain emerges as a modular Gen3 layer 1 blockchain which incorporates a flexible, open, interoperable and future-proof architecture. The ReefChain aims to become the de facto blockchain for Web3 innovation starting with MENA and beyond. The modular load architecture of ReefChain allows fast, seamless and secure communication coupled with energy-efficient consensus and scalable infrastructure. ReefChain infrastructure pushes the limits to preserve the raw essence of decentralized web. Now, let's discuss the node architecture of the ReefChain in detail. The node architecture is the core crux and backbone of every blockchain out there. The ReefChain has a unique node design that includes core services and libraries which can be customized and upgraded over time. Such functionalities ensure a future-proofing and adaptive infrastructure module that caters to the upcoming generational advancements and version upgrades. The Reef Chain node is divided into two main components, Client and Runtime, both having a distinguished task to fulfill. The Core Client is an outer node service that handles the network activities which include peer discovery, transactional request management, handling consensus among peers and responding to RPC calls. Whereas, the runtime contains all the business logics that executes the state transition of the blockchain. Both components have their own set of libraries and modules, comprising a unique palette or bundle of features and functionalities, which can be upgraded over the time. Now, before we explore these modules and libraries, let us understand the key services and importance of client and runtime. The core client is responsible for important activities that are performed outside of the runtime or are referred to as outer node services. Some of the most important activities that are handled by the core client services involve the following components. Storage, an efficient key value storage layer. Peer-to-peer -peer networking, where the Rust implementation of the lib P2P network stack is used to communicate with other network participants. Consensus To communicate with the network participant and to ensure they agree on the state of the blockchain. Remote Procedure Call or RPC APIs They accept inbound HTTP and WebSocket requests to allow blockchain users to interact with the network. Telemetry Collecting and providing access to the node metrics through an embedded Prometheus server. Execution Environment Selecting the execution environment, WebAssembly or native Rust for the runtime to use, then dispatch calls to the runtime selected. Such features can also be changed over time, providing room for innovation. Whereas, the runtime determines whether transactions are valid or invalid and is responsible for handling changes to the blockchain state. Requests coming from the outside come through the client into the runtime and the runtime is responsible for the state transition functions and storing the resulting state. In essence, the runtime is responsible for handling everything that happens on chain. The WebAssembly or WASM design of runtime enables forkless updates, multi-VM or platform compatibility and support, runtime validity checking and much more. Now, 
We have acquired a deep understanding of the core client and runtime. Let us take a deep dive into the core libraries that are the building blocks of the client and runtime. Similar to the Node architecture, which is composed of two main components, libraries are also divided into three main areas. Core client libraries for outer node services, runtime library and module, primitive libraries for underlying functions and interfaces for communication between the libraries. The core client libraries are mostly corresponding to their earlier discussed activities, which include key store or storage, networking, consensus, API, telemetry, and executor. But the notable one is the service library, which starts as a thread that spins up the network, client, and extrinsic pool, and also manages the communication between them. Now, the interesting bundle is that of runtime which includes multiple libraries comprising but are not limited to system. It defines the low-level types of primitives, storage items and core functions for the Reef chain. Indices It allocates indices for the newly created accounts. An index is a short form of an address. Session It allows validators to manage their session keys, provides a function for changing the session length and handles session rotation. Staking. It manages funds that have been staked by the network manipulators. Balances. Provides functionality for handling accounts and balances. BABE. Extends BABE consensus by collecting on-chain randomness from VRF outputs and managing epoch transitions. GRANDPA. It extends the GRANDPA consensus by managing the GRANDPA authority and set ready for the native code. Authority discovery. It retrieves the current set of authorities, learns its own identity, and signs and verifies messages to the other authorities. I am online. Allows validators to gossip a heartbeat transaction with each new session to signal that the node is online. Other than these libraries, runtime comprises modules that can be upgraded and improved over time. VM module is one such module that allows the support for multi-system architecture in the Reef chain. Currently, Reef chain allows support for EVM or we can say that it incorporates EVM module in its runtime. Since now, we have a clear understanding of core client and runtime libraries, we are all set to explore the most important set of libraries called primitive libraries. These primitive libraries enable control over underlying operations and enable communication between the core client services and runtime. They provide the lowest level of abstraction to expose interfaces that the core client or the runtime can use to perform operations or interact with each other. Some of the notable ones that comprises the Reef chain's primitive library create are Core. It offers shareable network types. STD. It exports usable primitives from the client to be used with any code that depends on the runtime. Timestamp to set and validate timestamp with each block, where the data is provided by the block author and verified by other validators. Consensus It's the common utility for building and using consensus engine in the Reef chain, which includes Babe and Grandpa. Runtime The module of runtime with shared primitive type. API The Reef chain's API is the interface between the node and the runtime version. Each runtime that should be executed by the Reef chain needs to have a runtime version. The runtime version is used to distinguish between these times. Authority Discovery It's a runtime API that helps to discover authorities. Block Builder The Block Builder API trait is that it provides the required functionalities for building a block. Session It's a core type for all sorts of session activities. Here, we must have developed a clear picture in our mind with a detailed understanding of both the core components and the functional libraries of the Reef chain. Such advanced and modular architecture ensures robust infrastructure for DApp developers. But every blockchain is incomplete without an amazing and reliable consensus mechanism that unlocks the decentralized portal on the blockchain network. Reef chain also incorporates its consensus mechanism to agree on the blockchain state. The Reef chain utilizes the nominated proof of stake or NPOS consensus mechanism to agree on the blockchain state. NPOS combines the security of POS 
with the added benefits of stakeholder voting, where only the nominated nodes are allowed to participate in the block validation. NPOS is designed to incentivize good behavior and filter out malicious activity on the blockchain. The consensus mechanism comprises of two separate phases. Block authoring is the process where nodes used to create new blocks, whereas block finalization is the process used to handle forks and choose the canonical chain. Here, the block authoring phase operates on blind assignment of blockchain extension or BABE, which offers slot-based scheduling, whereas the block finalization phase is taken care by Grandpa protocol, which says that the best chain is the longest chain. Since we are all set with the architecture and the consensus mechanism, let's take the deep dive into the most crucial aspect of the blockchain network, cryptography. Cryptography plays a key role in the design as it provides the mathematical variableness behind consensus system, data integrity and user security. Reef chain is engineered by keeping it important to consider computational cost of the cryptography method, prioritizing efficiency and processor loads. Such considerations make Blake 2 an ideal cryptographic mechanism. Blake 2 is a relatively recent hashing mechanism that provides equal or greater security than SHA-2, while also being significantly faster than other comparable algorithms. While determining the exact benchmark of its speed improvements over the hashing methods, it is highly dependent on hardware specifications. The biggest positive implications of Reef is how it heavily reduces the amount of time and resources a node will need in order to sync with the chain and to lesser extent lower required time for validating. Hereafter, having a deep analysis and gaining knowledge of every aspect of Reef Chain's architecture and design, we can conclude our discussion on Reef Chain. But before closing our discussion, we must look at the characteristics of the Reef Chain. Reef Chain is flexible in terms of modifications as it has inbuilt forkless auto-update functionalities, making upgrades fast and adaptive. Reef has a faster throughput rate of around 465 transactions per second while performing complex transactions on-chain. Reef incorporates open protocols such as libp2p and custom JSON RPC for customizing the architecture. Reef supports for the EVM provider, hardware library, remix IDE, Reef Wallet extension, etc. offers extensive development environment. Reef has a future proofing and customization with its modular Gen 3 architecture. Now, as we have come to the conclusion of this episode, feel free to reach us out for any doubts or queries. You can also join Reef's social channels, and we, the Reef team, will be more than happy to help you out. Stay tuned for the next episode and more alphas. With this, I hope you really enjoyed today's session and I, Janesh, the lead DevRel engineer will be signing off. Peace out.